Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another uh, review of some sort. I don't know how to start this, but I'm here with uh, Pops. Greetings, humans. Who's chewing on what? Ice? I'm eating something. Oh, well. We're here to review... I'm very uh, busy. I'm a busy person. Yeah. Uh, we're here to review Star Trek Discovery Season 2. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I could do this myself, but I could actually have the guy who knows... Yeah. Yeah. Tons of useless knowledge about Star Trek on here, so hence why he's here. Mm -hmm. So, yes. so as a Star Trek fan, you know, diehard Star Trek fan, what did you think of season two? Fantastic, except it as just like with season one, there's just so many. Um, it just takes you in so many different directions. I, I, I wish. The problem is the story arc literally is an arc. It's like, <laughs> oh look, here we are at the end. And then they, just like in the first season, they they spend the last show, uh, you know, the finale, um, uh, you know, trying to wrap up every single loose end. Well, I feel like this season's a little more coherent. Rushing. I feel like this season's a little more coherent, whereas season one was more like, we have so many ideas. Well, I mean, it was, like I said, it was a consistent story arc. Um, I like... Uh, Captain Pike was great. Yeah, he is um, one of the, the best things that, in here. That guy is definitely one of the best things happening. Yeah. Um, the guy playing Spock. Yeah, Spock was great. I really want to give a total shout out to Mary Chifo, who is the uh, the actress that played Laurel, uh, the Chancellor, which is interesting. And also, too, I would say in this continuity of Star Trek, they seem to be really playing up strong female characters, which is great um, because you know the original Star Trek was so male dominated um, it's nice to see that they're they're doing that although again I believe it it kind of goes a little bit against Canon simply because the they make a comment about uh, Gorkhan's daughter Azitbor being the first female Chancellor so it's a little out of continuity in that regard but uh, yeah well, you know, what you well maybe they'll still have her in the show, and maybe that like her first decree is to take Laurel, uh, like strike her name from the records and what have you. Nah, it doesn't sound like that's not a. Nah, I don't think they're gonna do that. But well, um, they they kind of did that with Discovery. Well, the well, I guess. I mean, <laughs> because it seems like the whole thing in, in Star Trek canon, because this is the original universe, yes. no matter. Um, the whole thing of, like, it looks like Laurel is very, like, willing to work with the Federation, and that's a lot, a lot of what the Klingons... Because the Klingon uh, treaty didn't happen until, like, 20 years before next TNG, right? Uh, more than that, but it was the Kittimer Accords is what brought about the permanent peace between the, the Klingon Empire and the Federation. The alliance, like, the, the set in alliance wasn't until a little later. Right, so... Uh, you know, so it, if again, you know, if they're doing that, I mean, I'm okay with them. You know, and I also think that the uh, the Klingons were doing the you know enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing. Um, you know, it was pretty enlightened of them to realize that they they needed to fight for the future too. But you know, the whole thing of Laurel becoming Chancellor and everything. A little sideways for me, but you know what? Who cares? Like I said, the actress that does it is is. Uh, Mary Chifo, she's fantastic. Um, she plays a great uh, chancellor. Um, it was nice to hear him actually get to say the line that was <laughs> a good know, day to die. Today is a good day to die. So it was, it was great to hear that. Um, I like this Klingon dialect also, uh, and the guy who plays uh, Ash Tyler. I can't think of his actual name, the actor, uh, but his his Klingon is quite good. Like, he clearly did his own work on, you know... Yeah, on speaking Klingon. He's, he's very good. Um, um, I don't like all the fluidity of the timeline, but, you know, whatever. The, what other, th the other thing is that um, this actually, like, there are a few times you and I were watching the show, it's like, please don't go the route you're going, and thankfully they don't go... Yeah. To, like, when they, they mentioned Borath, and they didn't name uh, Laurel and Ash's son... They like we were kind of thinking before that episode premiered. It was like, please don't be Moog. Please don't be. Yeah, yeah. Please don't be Moog. Don't be Moog. Um, and uh, that's that was a good. Th I'm glad they didn't do that. I'm also glad that Control AI did not turn out to be the board because it was very much like. Because I was feeling it, man. I was like, like oh, everything is like they're assimilating, like the Borg. They're yeah. learning, like the Borg. So I was thinking that 
they were going to be the Borg, but they weren't, which was cool. Yeah, so thankfully, like... Thankfully not. Um, I guess, like, the other thing is, like, how this kind of, pay, like, pays a lot of respect to the original pilot, because Pike is only known for one episode, the pilot, and we all kind of know how his future's kind of effed. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and they even tell him, you know, that, you know, once he touches the time crystal, he's going to see his future, but then... It's kind of like, well, they changed it, so it's a possible future, but I think everybody knows, you know, his Pike he, is going to end up in a wheelchair and a respirator, but... For the rest of his life. For the rest of his days, which kind of sucks, but... He, he uh, you accepted also, it. Yeah, we also now, hopefully, they're going to play up the relationship between Pike and Spock, so you can kind of find out how he becomes so loyal to him that he's willing to violate, you know, a Starfleet general order... Uh, in order to, to save him later on, so you'll find out, you know, the loyalty and things like that. That's a very human kind of reaction, so it's interesting that they're playing up more on Spock's humanity in this particular version rather than in the original series where they very rarely made mention of his humanness or humanity, I guess. Yeah. The, um... The other, you know, I guess aspect of this show is that, you know, uh, the whole Seven Signals thing was, uh, like, we were kind of wondering, like, where is this going and yeah, what are we doing? I still don't. I mean, you know, it's that whole thing you have to understand a little about how, like, how time tree, like, had to go to the past to get to the future. Yeah. Kind of, whatever, but... So I guess, like, the other major thing we got to talk about is, like, what, you know, season three is obviously going to be, like, them in the far future, but it... No, it's not. Like, it makes me wonder of how far in the future it's going to be. I'm telling you, the, dis the Discovery arc part is, is over. No, they've, they've said on for some, uh, season three of Discovery. Yeah, that's going to be the name of the series or whatever. I'm telling you, it ain't going to be about Discovery. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're going to loop... Why would they even bring Enterprise into this? Why, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you, this is a... It's a continuity thing between um, this show and uh, original series. I'm just telling you, you heard it here first, kids. That's what's going to happen. I I predict that that is... Okay, but let, let's, for sake of argument, um, let's say, for sake of argument, they do, like, the next season is Discovery in the far future. It makes you wonder of how far in the future it's going to be. Here's a problem. They already did a series like that and it flopped. Yeah, but Voyager was... Well, Voyager was hideous. It was a well, Voyager wasn't even in the future. It was a different it doesn't, it was in a whole, Yeah, whatever. Same thing. It's, you gotta have no way. And, and but yeah, Voyager sucked. Fight me. Um, but anyway. Um, not because of... I mean, just it just wasn't... It just was bad. It was bad. Anyway. The thing is, they got a good thing going with this. I think... I just don't see how they're going to um, how they're going to keep the. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a bridge over to the new thing. So, well, if that's the case, uh, how long does Pike stay on as captain of the Enterprise until Kirk takes over? Uh, five years. Well, how we don't know how far into the his right. captaincy is. So this is gonna be fun. We can now go about all the adventures about Captain Pike. I think that'll be great. And they still have. Uh, Number, uh, number one. Number one, and Je Philippa, Captain Giorgio, or Empress Giorgio, whatever she's going by. So, I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunities uh, for development. I don't think they need to, they don't need to make up some kind of bullshit story stuff for the, um, for Discovery. I like all the actors and everything. I hate to see those guys lose their jobs. But That's why, you know, they're, they said they're continuing with season three, you know. Right, but how, okay, well then, that's, I, I just don't, I, I just think it's unnecessary. I just would rather, let's, I want to stay where we are. And, well, like, like, the whole thing is, like, th that whole idea of, you know, having Spock, you know, everyone was wondering, well, how does Spock have a, you know, adopted sister and no one asked him? You know, how does he never, why does he never talk about it? We got the answer. Um, the other thing is, you know, why... Also, did you ever hear about this? Like, apparently this is like a... I don't know how ca far canon this is for uh, the character of number one, but apparently she's a... According to some of the comics, is that she's an android? Nope. Also, speaking of that, I didn't like all the enhanced people and all that other stuff. Didn't like it. 
did not like it. Although, but the only it is, you know why they put them in there? Diversity. That's why. Because we're checking a checkbox for diversity. Yeah, I'm serious. That's what I'm sure. That's why it's there. It's not enough to have. Because it's like you know, they're it's like they're almost they're going over the top to prove how inclusive they are. So. Not only do they have people in, of different genders in different power roles, they have different species. And then they go so further than that, and they say, oh, well, now you're not even 100% human. You're part well, what of was data then? Data was not. Data was a, a machine. It was he all was a also a, co a commanding officer. But that's not the point. The point. The, my point is is that, I, I, like I said, I, it almost kind of feels a little, I don't know. But like I said, there's several. there were several enhanced characters. Why? Why couldn't they just be people? You know what I mean? Because we have they had a makeup effect budget and they wanted to use it? I guess, I guess. But, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I get it. Hmm. You know, we're all being inclusive. And that's fine. I mean, I think that's the right thing. And don't get me wrong. You know, we, we should be inclusive and we should be, you know, we should respect people's differences and we should be, we should have as much, you know, difference... Or, or much variety in our lives as possible because obviously that's what makes the world a better place. That's what Star Trek's my, about. Right. I'm just saying I don't necessarily... It felt a little forced. That's all I'm saying. So, well. Anyway, I love the Klingons. Uh, they start off being super one-dimensional, but then they turned out to be pretty good. Um, special effects, outstanding. I mean, like, movie quality special effects. Especially um, in the season finale. Especially in the finale. Um, looking forward to seeing what they do next with it. Um, I hope that uh, I would like to see the Discovery cast. I mean, I don't know how you how do you bring them back. I don't know, or you have their adventures. But here's the problem with that: is if they have these adventures in the far, 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 far future, you know, the Discoveries. It's like well, somebody coming to this world only understanding horses and buggies. I mean, it's, it's, it's it'd be kind of fun like that. And plus, like no, no. Maybe this would be like uh, how, because they are doing a Picard show, maybe this is how it spins out of it, much like they were doing a Giorgio show, like they're spinning Section 31 out of this. Well, I would love to see a Section 31 show um, with Ash and with Ash Tyler and, and uh, some of those other guys. Uh, I think that would be... The other thing, too, I don't seem to like is that Starfleet seems to kind of play fast and loose with the rules. It's like, oh, we have these rules. Well, really what we're saying is they're kind of more like suggestions, so... Yeah, but they did say at the end, like, maybe we should have uh, pulled in the reins on 31. On yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, they... Because it's know. like a very post-war. Like, they, we just got to have a war with the Klingons, and maybe we made some mistakes by letting them have too much power. Well, I realize that, but... You know, it's an interesting dichotomy with... They're all about, you know, peace and love and science, and um, and yet they have these super clandestine guys who operate in the gray areas. So yeah. that's what I think about that. Anyway, super great. Um, if you haven't seen it, go see it. Um, if you've seen it, see it again. Um, if you yeah. haven't, just go go on yeah. CBS. Um, yeah. Also, too, if you are on the Twitter box, uh, you should follow Mary Chifo uh, on Twitter. She posts some really interesting, cool stuff. Um, you should also follow the actress that plays uh, Admiral, what's her name? I can't think of her name right now, but she also, she posts on the regular. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, it's totally good. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's, the, oh, by the way, if you're going to follow people on Twitter box, you should follow me, too, by the way. Um, I post some interesting stuff. Um uh, I also am on Instagram too, so if you want to you want to hit up my Twitters, uh, my Twitter is at uh, Redneck Rockstar, and okay. if you want to hit up my Insta, which is what all you kids say, uh, my Instagram is. Um, We're running out of time. Uh, what is my Insta? It's oh uh, shit. What is it? Oh, uh, Rich Shepherd sixty seven, all one word. So mm -hmm. totally follow me on on the on the Twitter box or on the Insta. And um, we'll catch you guys yeah. later. So thanks. Love, uh, peace, and chicken grease. Yeah, so uh, I want to thank my dad for coming in on this. Bye, and, humans. And, uh, yeah, maybe we'll get together to do the Ultraman anime. Oh, yeah. I just need to watch it because he started it. I started me. it. Goodbye. Anyway, so hope you all enjoyed this, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.